Hey guys, welcome back. Nigel with you. Part 16 now of the uh, of the A20 build. This is the Hong Kong Models 132nd scale A20G. Uh, it is currently the 9th of the, or the 8th of December 2023. So uh, if you're watching this in the future, then some of the things I say may not be uh, appropriate to to that date. <laughs> but um, yeah, we're looking forward to the J appearing, the JK version, which I believe is also going to have an RAF. Uh, version in it as well so uh, we'll be building that as well on this channel that's going to be one of the glass nose rather than the guns so while I've been away I've got all this um, painting remember we assembled all this this has all been primed in black obviously we've got the fuselage interior is all primed up now um, we've got all our parts on here ignore that that's part of Bismarck um, we've got all our parts now primed up and if you remember I was going to glue all these parts into position but I didn't because basically wanted them black on the inside and obviously when that fits on there like so we want to be able to see inside we want it painted black or you know green whatever it's going to be um, rather than have any light grey plastic showing through so that's why we didn't fit those straight away so we'll get those cleaned up um, and get them fitted I think before we do any green painting and a few other bits and pieces. One other thing I did cover at the end of part 15, but you may not have seen it, is these parts here. The tops are just molded circles. So I've drilled them out and as you can see, I've opened them up from behind to make the metal look thinner, the plastic look thinner. And then these holes here, you can see I've got a series of four holes in line with those. They're drilled at three millimeters. There's one there at two millimeters, which is higher up. And then there's another one there at three millimeters. So uh, again, when they're fitted in place, we've now got the black paint. Um, we've now got the black paint backing them. So, uh, so that's all good. You can see they're going to go in there like that. So now when you look inside, you don't see grey plastic. You see sort of a hollow box, which is what it is in real life. They're just like, they're just plunged holes, which are for lightning. And they also had some rigidity to the skins as well. So there we go. So, um, so that's that done. Uh, other than that, I've done pretty much nothing else. I've got these clear parts off the spree. You can see here we have these clear parts. We have G2 and G3 going in. There's G3 there. So we've got G3 and G2 going in. Now obviously, I wanted to get the recess painted black first. So we've got the recess in there all painted black. I should have gone in from this side on this one, which I haven't done, which I may have to do. You can see here we've gone in from this side and that just makes sure that we don't see any grey plastic. And I've also gone around these as I always do with a magic marker and just gone around the edge of the, the clear part in black so you don't see that chrome edge which you always get on clear parts. So um, I think actually we'll get away with that because we do have paint on there so that's okay. Um, so obviously I've got the edge, you can see I've put some dots on these, I've got two dots on that one. And then there's three dots on that one to show which is which. So this is number two. So number two is going in this side. So that's obviously just going to pop into there. Now what I'm going to do is just get my knife and just remove some paint. Not all of it, just some out of the corner. And some from there as well. So that we get a nice strong bond. Because the last thing you want is to be putting your masking on or something from the outside and then you pop your window in. So that's number two. So that's going to go in there like that. Okay, so that's just going to pop into there. This was the right side, wasn't it? Yes. That's a very tight fit. It's a nice, nice snug fit. It seems to be sitting up on the forward end for some reason. I don't know if it's the way the moulding is. It does seem to be sitting up. I wonder if three... It's, it's kind of flush. I wonder if three would fit better. Oops. It fell through, didn't it? It fell through. Now that feels like a better fit, I must be honest. 
What on earth is holding that in? <laughs> Something was holding that in. Um, let's just see how number three fits in this side. So I would I would turn the camera off, but uh, you might want to see this. So that fits in there, lovely. Let's see how number two fits in this side. All the way round. It looks like you can actually mix them up. Um, I think we'll go as per the instructions, but it does look like you can mix them up. So number two is going in this side, and for some reason it's like higher up at the front. Ah, I can see what it is now. Where I've scraped it, I've left a little shaving of plastic. That's what was holding it up. No, it's still not going down in, but it's, yeah, it's not fitting properly. It's, um, I think it's, I think maybe the outer flange is slightly larger than the, than the recess in the fuselage. So I'm just going to remove some material. And if this is the case, then yours will be the same. So it's worth bearing in mind. Yeah, I think it still needs some more offer there. It's not going in. For some reason, it is not going in. We've got quite a large flange around, around the outside of the actual clear window, so there's plenty there we can remove. Hmm. Very strange. Let me, I'll, I'll look at this off camera then I'll come back. Okay so that one's in, not glued, but it's in and it's nice and flush. What I'm finding is when I fit, let me actually just remove some paint from here again before I uh, carry on. I'm just going to remove some paint from there just to make sure there is at least one area of bare plastic so that the glue can really get to work. And then remove the paint from that tab, obviously, and then around there. Right, so what I'm finding is when I put the clear part in, if you, you will have the same result with yours because they all come from the same mould. I can feel that it's slightly recessed. This one is much better than the other side. It's slightly recessed, especially on the top. So what I'm going to do is take this part out. I've got the top towards me. What I'm going to do is use the knife and remove plastic from this flange so that the window, the clear part should I say, can sit in further into the fuselage, which will make it more flush with the outside. Just going to remove that ink from there. There we go. As long as we make sure we leave ink on that edge, as I'm pointing at it now, on that edge around the actual clear window, that's going to be fine. If you if you remove it from there, that's when you get this big chrome ring you'll see. It. This is the one tip I use, and I know that everybody everybody who watches my channel now does it. Use the, uses the black pen around the clear parts. It just makes such a difference. Um, and you got this nice and flush. So this is going to be really easy to glue in and this is where people cringe and they will ask the question I've always been told that Tammy Extra Thin will fog clear parts. It will fog clear parts if you get it on the actual clear part but if all you're doing is gluing it in what I'm going to do I've got a nice drop of glue on I'm going to touch one area and it should capillary all the way around and it hasn't quite gone around the front so you can see there that is now glued in and I'm not going to touch it at all I'm just going to leave that alone for a good few hours and just let it dry. Okay, we'll do the same here. Nice big drop, you can see. If you can see what I'm doing, you can see that tab to the right. And what I'm gonna do is put a nice big drop of glue under there and it should capillary all the way around. And it hasn't quite gone around the front, so I'm just gonna put another little drop 
on the front there and then leave it if you go pushing it in you will find you get glue oozing out or whatever just leave it alone and just let it sit there what you could do is leave it for like 10 minutes let the glue gel so it doesn't ooze and then just give them a little push but um it's best to just leave them and let the let the glue do the work as i say if you start pushing you run the risk of the glue capillary under your finger and that'll ruin the clear part if you and the, you'll get glue oozing out from the edges but leave it like that and you can see that is in there that's lovely nice and flush and then what we'll do is go over the cotton bud and remove that excess ink from there but um and you can see that ring that's on the inside that shiny ring you can see so and the reason i didn't do this before because i wanted to make sure i got black paint on the edge of the plastic around the window so that's why i didn't put them in before priming so we'll leave that now for a few hours to dry and then we can um we can look at getting that seam sorted around the outside and also we're going to be using this the uh, mask set from ASK Art Scale Kit, which is M32062, and this is the double sided set. So, as you can see here, this is the interior, this is the exterior. And if you look in the middle of that wheel, you've got 47 and 48, they are the masks for the inside. So, what we'll do is we'll make sure we'll see how big the mask is. Um, what I don't want to do is look through this side and see a big little black rim around there, so that's why I want to uh, paint it green, green preferably. I'd rather see the interior green in there than the black. So we shall see how it goes. Right, I'll see you in a right, minute. So an hour or so later now, and uh, as you can see they're in. What I've done, I've gone round the outside edge of the clear part with some black Mr. Surfacer just to sort of seal it in so you don't see this big gap around there. It's unfortunate the way they've made this clear part. It's, you can see it's quite thick. Um, I think, I mean, I don't think we're really going to see it unless you try and look for it. But I think if I do, well, when I do another one, I think what I'll do is sand away a lot of that backing to thin it down. Because you can see that when, when you when you can see it there, it's it's quite a thick, big chunky part stuck in there. So if you sand away the back, it won't really mo notice much. I mean, we could actually go in there now with a knife, a, a curved blade, and scrape away and just remove some of that big thick frame. Um, we don't really want to remove all of it because we'll end up with hardly anything holding the clear part in. But uh, we could actually go in and, and reduce the size of that now with a knife. So yeah, my advice, if you haven't built yours yet, sand them down to thin out that thick section. Um, and then you'll uh, you'll end up with uh, a, a much a much better look to it. In fact, even just, you know, just 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 taking it down like this is making a, a little bit of a difference to its appearance. But, um, worth doing. Anyway, on the outside, there is a slight gap around the part where it's slightly smaller than the hole that it fits in. So what I'm doing, rather than having a big step around there, is filling in the gap. Now, I've learnt myself in the past, using black Mr. Surfacer on clear parts can be disadvantageous. It can actually uh, make the plastic go dull and it needs to be polished. And of course, if we start polishing, we're going to lose all this lovely um, stress skin detail. So I'm using here is Tamiya XF1 black because I know it won't damage the clear part and I can just... At the end of the day, I can just wash it off with uh, with some thinners. So what I'm going to do is just put this in here. This is nice and thin. We just put that in and just brush it around. And as you can see, I'm putting way too much on because I know it's going to one shrink back and two, it's going to capillary into the gap. So we can just brush that around like that. Okay, and then just leave that to dry. You can see I've already done this side here and it's all shrunk back. Okay, so what we can do is come along and put some in this side as well and let it all go around and let it all you can see it capillary in around there and uh, this applies to all windows all clear parts and we just keep doing that until we end up with it sort of sitting on the surface raised and then when we wipe it over with a cotton bud with some leveling thinners or IPA or whatever um, it will it will remove all the paint from the surface and it will just leave like a almost like a rubber ring around the um, around the actual window, which is what we want. Uh, we want it to be nice and flush. It's not sort of the width of the gap that matters, it's the depth. If, you, if you've got this great big cavern, um, it looks awful, but if you, if you just sort of take away the depth of that cavern and make it sort of semi-flush, it looks a lot tidier. And you can see there how it looks a lot nicer. So, uh, 
So there we go. Another little tip for you. Uh, you can see here I can still, even after all this time, I can still move that window. You can see the, the paint moving as I push it. So yeah, be careful. Don't go, um, don't go messing with it too much. Right, so I'll see you in a minute. And right, we're back. Um, welcome back. <laughs> welcome back. I'm saying welcome back because it's about 10 days since I filmed the last little segment that you saw where I was putting the um, XF1 in the windows. And as you can see, I'm still putting XF1 in the windows because it is a very deep cavern around that window that we need to get filled. So use an XF1, as I said, because it won't damage any plastic. Um, but Mr. Surface won't damage the plastic, but it can fog clear parts. I think it depends what the plastic makeup of the clear parts is. Anyway, so pushing on, I've done a little bit off camera. I want to say a big thanks to Tim. Tim, I think it was Tim, pointed out to me there was a hole missing in this part here. Um, these are parts, parts F4 and F1. Um, as you can see in here, there is a, there are four holes and there should be five. So uh, there we go. So that was something he pointed out to me. I'm just looking now, should there be another hole there? I'll have to check my references. Maybe there should be even another hole there. Maybe there should be six. Although, in fact, I'll go and have a look at that now. Not really sure, to be honest. It looks like there maybe should be five holes and it looks like maybe the spacing is incorrect. So but it doesn't matter. It goes inside here. It sit, you can basically see it sits inside the fuselage like this and then the turret goes in so you're not going to see any of it anyway so uh, and it was Todd sorry not Tim but um yeah it kind of looks like there should be five holes but it looks like there should be a hole at each end but the four holes in the middle could be more spaced out but as I say it's a it's a tiny little error that you know isn't ever going to be seen unless you take the turret out and look inside and you go oh, oh. So I'm not going to worry about it. Right. Um, but it's good to have that extra hole there rather than just a blank. Because when you take the... I mean, you're not going to see this end anyway when you take the turret out because it's hidden under here. But, um, you know, in fact, it's not. It's hidden under there. It's hidden under that side. But to have that hole missing in the middle is a lot more prominent. So thanks for that, Todd. And if you're doing one, do the same. They're three mil diameter, so they're easy to do. Um... Right, so while we've been on camera, I've actually glued this piece of photo etch onto this panel. You remember, this is the one where I was fussing about the throttle quadrant and stuff. So I've actually glued this on. I've gone round the edge with some super glue to um, to fill it in. And this is why I do this. It's so because I don't want it to look like a piece of photo etch glued on. If you look at the the Edward set, you know that they show you. Yes, it's just a mock up. It's just to show you what you get. But I'll put a photograph up now. And you can see how it actually looks like a piece of photo etch glued onto a piece of plastic. I want to make it like one piece. So that's why I do this first. And then I doubt you can see it, but on there, they've got liquid mask over the gauges or the the, the, stop, the the markings and stuff. And then I'll just give it a light spray with the cockpit green um, because this green doesn't match the cockpit green that I've got already. As you can see, it's a, it's a different shape. It's only slightly different, but I'll just fog over the front and then paint the sides properly. And I want to do the same with this panel here that goes on the on the starboard side. I've got this panel here which goes in. And again, I don't want it to look like a piece of stuck on brass. I want it to form, I want it to look like you know part of the model. So uh, what I've done is I've sanded some material away from the back of this panel. It's slightly too too wide in this dimension to fit properly. So you need to sand some material off the back. So that's going to go down like that. And I think what I'm going to do is initially glue this down with um, with the black because that will stay, stay wet a while longer and give me a chance to position it and everything. As long as you don't push it down, it will be fine. Okay, as soon as you push it down, it will position itself and it will stick into place. So we're going to drop that on top of there. <clears throat> like so, and then just move it across. There we go. Just move that about. Oh, if we can get it perfect on the edge, we won't need to do any work on it. So there we go, that's gone down nicely. So I'm going to grab a cotton bud. The only reason I'm using a cotton bud is I can push it down without hurting the surface. 
the paint on the Edward sets is not the toughest paint in the world so be a little bit careful with it. Okay so that's gone down so now I can come in with my thin super glue and just touch that on the edge and it'll capillary under and then I should be able to just nudge that down and that will go into place nicely and then on the front just going to put some under there just like a pillory under and I should be able to just give that a nudge down and it should stay in position which it's not doing because Got a huge ball of super glue on the end of the applicator which I need to remove. <clears throat> That's how you do that. Just there we go, and wipe it off with the cloth. That's that done. So now I should be able to get in there and get the super glue to go into the joint rather than just. There we are. Okay, so that's how I go about I'll leave that cocktail stick in there and let it wedge it down because it's um I'm gonna see if I can get some on the side there as well without leaving a great big mark behind. There we go. So that's gone in there nicely. And there we are. Job done. Okay, moving forward. That's glued in now. That's all nicely in there. So that's all cool. This black primer really makes it difficult for filming. Um, so if we look on the Edward instructions, we've got a little box here, which is going in there. Um, I can't really see any reference photos, but it's tiny. It will just add to a bit. Uh, what they're saying is it goes in level with the bottom of H47. So basically that's, that's H47 and we've got the cover on there, as you can see. And uh, you, you may be wondering why I'm doing this. I, I do this so that it all blends in. So other, otherwise you end up with the model look, the... the that doesn't matter in there if I scrape that off. Um, what we end up with is a model that looks like a load of plastic with a load of brass glue to it. And I want it to look like one. So that there, as you can see, is a little box that you fold up. Okay, and here it is here. And what I do, rather than have the rather than have it glued in with just the edges of that box, what I do is I've got a piece of plastic and I've cut it so it's the same size as the box, glued it inside and then we've got the whole surface area of the brass glued to that big lump of plastic and then what I do is cut that excess off of there and then sand the back until we hit brass or we don't even need to just just sand the back down so it's pretty much there and then um, And then we're there. So uh, there we go. So that's we've now got a plastic lump that we can glue to the model rather than just the edges of the brass. I'm just going to check the references again and see which way it goes up. I think it goes with the the dial at the bottom. Oh, it doesn't matter, does it? You're not going to see it anyway. Um, so what I'm going to do is just dip that whole thing in the super glue, just like so, and then stick it in there. Just 
just like that. From what I need to do, I should have test fitted it first, shouldn't I? Silly boy. Terrible schoolboy error. I just need to trim some plastic away from that wall there. Just because it's slightly wider. Of course I fitted it when it was a box. And now I've got a piece of plastic glued to the model. Get out. Go away. So now this should now go into there. Like so. There we are. That's gone in, just like so. Job done. So that's that one in there. And as you can see there, when we spray it, it's all going to look like one. And what we'll do, we will get my brilliant, absolutely awesome VMS liquid mask. What I'm going to do is go over the front of that one, just like so. And then, where's my cocktail stick gone? Oh no, here it is. Just manipulate that around. There we go, that's on there. And then on here we've got this little gauge part, which we obviously don't want to paint green. So we can move it around on there. As I say, it doesn't need to be perfect because there's a little placard at the bottom there. We'll pitch some from there and put on there. It doesn't need to be perfect, it's just you're just trying to make sure that the black bits stay black and don't get covered in green paint. So there we go, right. And what we need to do over here <clears throat> is get some of our brilliant VMS liquid mask onto there and then manipulate that around to cover that white placard there. And then we've also got, oops, so we've got some mask on there, which we don't want on there. Goodbye. So we'll take some of this mask from here and we'll just put that on there. And cover up that placard at the front. Let's put another drop on there. Come on, come out. Just use that as like a reservoir for this one. cover up. This is the trouble that it's starting it's such a small amount it's starting to dry instantly and you end up trying to put some on and you end up lifting what was there already. So we get some more down here there we go. So you can see that's all masked up in there now so we paint it green we won't be we won't be painting all the all the black bits. So I'm gonna have a look through some more and then I'll come back when we're ready to get some painting done, I think. Um, and actually, as I say, today is December the 18th. The last bit I did was December the 8th. And this has just arrived. And this is the A20 Boston book. That I'm going to review right away for you. So, uh, back in a minute. Well, that was a good book, wasn't it? Very good indeed. Right. Let's move on. So, um, done a little bit of work off camera. Got this one all seam filled around the edges, masked off and glued in. So that's all got the VMS liquid mask on it and on these two boxes here I have as well. So that's all fitted. Um, these rear windows, as you can see, with many, many applications of the XF1 and then going over the cotton bubble IPA, you can see we've got the, the clear part sort of sealed, sealed in now. So you won't have any horrible gaps around it. I've got the um, ASK mask on there on the inside. This is the double-sided set, which is, this is it here, uh, 200M32062. And it's a lovely little set and it will, everything will fit beautifully. One little disappointment on the kit, which I'll correct on the next one, is we have this, as I showed you before, we have this thick flange around the clear part so now it's just fit in. Um, unfortunately, that means that when you look through it, as you can see, you can see the flange, you can see how thick it is. I think when I do the next one, I'm going to see if we can sand that right off and just leave a little thin slither behind to enable us to glue it in. Um, because it is quite 
unsightly although luckily it's not like up here it's down there so not too bad but when you look at the model you're going to be kind of looking on that angle and you're going to see that great big thick ring around there so we'll have to see how it looks but uh yeah, i'm sure it's not going to worry too much right uh, we can always spatter some mud and stuff up there if you want to so and this side here we've got that panel in that you saw and again that's all masked so what i'm going to do now is give the interior some pre-shading just to sort of line all up a bit otherwise just it'll just be like green so we've got the black already so what i'm going to do is go i've got the um this is tamiya xf4 um and i'm going to basically go in i need a piece of towel here just to check my flow there we go and this is xf4 with leveling thinners about 60 70 percent thinners to, to um 20 30 percent or 30 40 percent paint so it's a nice thin mix pressure is low not really too worried about perfection here it's just literally the opposite of when you appreciate your aircraft with black lines what i'm doing is making a lighter area in between so what i'm going to do is go in like this as you can see already it's playing up it's really spattery but i'm not going to worry about that too much Yeah, I'm going to have to thin this some more. I think it's it's a it's a bit spattery. Although I'm not really too worried about it. It's only for effect. So we're going to come in here, come in here, just like so, and just basically add some. You know, here's a bigger area. This is easier to show you what I'm trying to achieve. Yeah, this is too spattery. I'm going to have to um, thin it down a bit. Hang on a sec. All right, so there we are. You can see the sort of effect of after. It's just basically brightening up certain areas and leaving certain areas darker. So um, we'll start on this side. I'm literally about 85% thinners now and 15% paint. Having said that, my XF4 is very old. And I have a feeling there is something wrong with this airbrush. I've got a feeling the nozzle's been damaged or something because, you know, I'm down on about 10 PSI and the spatter is ridiculous. So um, as you'll see now, that is some... Um, it's, well, it seems to be a bit better now. Maybe it had a blockage and it's cleared. But uh, that's what I'm trying to do is, is just basically lighten up the areas in the middles of the panels just to make it all sort of, you know, not just one monotone green. Not really going to see any of that in there anyway. Not sure how much of that can be seen. You come into here, that area there is all covered up, I know. We'll go in between there, we'll get in there. We'll get in there, get down to there, like so. And obviously when we do the glass nose version, there'll be a lot more interesting stuff going on here. Just been talking to Neil today about that model. It's sounding like it's going to be a beauty. He asks me questions about stuff and I go away and research it and then suggest the options and then he goes and looks at the options and decides where to go from there. So uh, It's very nice that someone is asking the questions. Today is the 19th of December and I have just had notification that my Dambuster Lancaster has arrived, so I've paid for that. Okay, you can see, get the general idea of what we're trying to do here. It's just, it needs to be a bit garish. I could have actually used bright yellow rather than this mustard yellow. With doing this and then some dry brushing afterwards, we can. We can really add some effect to the area. Uh, get some of this done back here. So you can see that's the general idea of getting the, the highlighting done in the fuselage. All this area here is obviously covered by Bombay. I've got a feeling this area here 
I'm not sure how much of it can be seen, but we'll just we'll just put some blotches in there. Just so the paint has something, there's something there to look at. Um, when it comes to in here, I'm not going to do anything with this. Just probably just paint this green. Um, maybe just add a couple of lighter colours across the top. And then we've got all our bits and pieces here. So this is the uh, this is the turret ring. So in here we can add some highlights around the holes. As I say, there's no real sort of science to this. It's just putting some variations in to, to take away the monotone look. Just something to that will just show through and just make it look a bit better. One would hope. And I'll just add some splodges in there. You get the idea. It's um, it's all about artistic license. Okay, so I'm going to get the rest of this done, and then I'll come back and show you how it looks when I've done it. Um, I do try to keep my videos so that you can see what I'm doing, rather than this is what I've done, this is what I've done, this is what I've done, and because uh, I know that can be a little bit a little bit on the boring side, rather than actually seeing any work going on. So I'll get this finished. And then uh, we'll come back and we'll get some green down on it. Right, so as you can see, I've done a lot of this off camera. And hopefully you can see there the subtleness, the subtlety of it. You can see the, the, the brighter the brighter yellow showing through, giving it that sort of depth. It's just, it, um, I don't know the words to use. It's just giving it a, a, a sort of patina that's, it's just not all green. It's a nice... So when we put washes on and stuff, it'll, it'll look really good. Um, so I've also done that. That's just painted green. If you remember, there's no highlighting on there. And you can see the difference. It's kind of, you know, it's just green. There's no bright spots. It's just dark and light rather than bright, dark and light. So um, what we'll do now, we'll just do on, on camera, I'll do a bit of this fuselage for you. What we've got here is my mix. Now, please don't ask what the mix is because I don't remember, but it's the mix, mix as suggested in the manual, which is XF4 five parts, XF1 one part. Um, and I've since added more yellow to it to lighten it down because I thought it was a bit dark. I've got my little palette here that I've shown before. This is the AK Real Colours, which I think is a bit too light. This is H58, which I think is the right colour. And then this is the Tamiya mix per, as per the instructions. So I think that's too light, I think that's too dark, so I've got something in between there. And always remember with these Tamiya colours and with the AK Real colours, paint them and let them dry. Don't look at them like this and think, you know, oh dear, they're vastly different. You can see there, that is that colour and that is that colour. You can see they're nothing like that once they're dry. Okay, so uh, bear that in mind. Um, so, let's get our cloth, just do a little test on there. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. About 15 PSI, pressure's a bit lower, and uh, it's about 60, 70% thinner. And we're just gonna come in and just, in circular motions, just color in this area. Just like so. Get to the back of that control panel there. Just basically paint the whole thing and let that little bit of yellow shine through. 
This is really smelly. There you go. So you can see now, when you look at that, it's kind of like pre shady. You've got the dark lines around the panel lines, and you've got the lighter colour in between. Can add some more, whatever. And then once we give it a wash, and you know, it's gonna it's gonna really pop. So I I did have some white plastic card on the top of that panel there, so I need to give that a a good coat of the green, although it's not going to be visible once the other throttle levers are on top of it. You're not going to see any of that anyway. So we will just make sure it's all sort of green as it were. And this area here needs to be done because we'll see that through those holes. And there we are. So I'm going to finish this off in the booth because it's really smelly and I've got Jessica here with me and yeah. So uh See you in a bit. There we go. That's all our panelling done. Oh, I've forgotten to do that one. I've just cleared the airbrush out as well. What a swine. <laughs> I've got to do that one. So uh, get some more green in the airbrush and get that painted I suppose. Okay, so that's done. So we've got all our bits and pieces now all done. There's that panel I just showed you. And you can see on there the effect of having the, the light in the middle and the dark around the outside. It's just as I say, it's just artistic license. And uh, personally, I think it looks great. It really does give it some body. If you, I, I, I'm not that clever. I don't know the words I should be using, but uh, I just think it really does. I mean, you can see on here all the, you know, all the, the dark areas around the ribbon and the light areas in between the ribbon. And that's done because of the pre-shading and the black primer. You can really see it on there where the, where the parts are open. And I've actually tried the cockpit in here and it looks um, it looks lovely, it matches and everything. So what I'll do now is just leave this to dry for a while. I've got, actually got to go shopping, food shopping here. Yeah, great, I love that. I'd rather do ironing. Um, and no, I don't get delivered because basically you, you get a week's shopping and it all comes and the date it's all got to be eaten by Saturday. <laughs> so I don't bother. Um, or in today's case, today is Tuesday. It'll, it'll probably come and it will have to be eaten by Thursday. So... Uh, and that's why I don't do um, home delivery. So, got a bit of something there, I think. There we go, that's that gone. So what I'll do is leave this now for a couple of hours just to dry, and I'll seal it in with a semi-gloss coat, something like LP24. Um, the reason for that is if we come in and start to do washes and stuff now, um, this being Tamiya paint is very porous, and it just soaks it up like a rag, and it just goes, if I put a black wash here, I would never get it off. It would it would just make the whole thing a very dark green. So we just seal it in with a with a um, a, a clear coat, almost a primer. Then seal it in with a clear coat, and then when you put the wash on, I might even use a gloss actually. When you put a wash or anything on, it just runs into the corners like it's supposed to. It doesn't just sit there and uh, and stain the whole thing. So there we go. So I will see you back in a minute. <laughs> after I've got a clear coat down. All right, just before I gloss it, a um, couple of points of note. Uh, this floor, this goes down in here. Okay, if it's down there, I believe that will be plywood. So I've done it tan and I'm gonna wood grain it, but first obviously I'm gonna put a clear coat on it to seal the, that's um, LP, LP16, deck tan. Uh, it's good hard wearing paint. So uh, we don't have any worries about it being attacked by anything. Um, I've also noticed in the ends of the Bombay, we have some big square holes where the Bombay goes together. But the kit is very cleverly designed. You've got these here are hidden. Those there where I've put glue are actually hidden by these top pieces here that go in. And up here, I think they're going to be hidden by the cockpit. So I've put some glue in them anyway, just in case they do show up. I've got to paint this green anyway. So... Um, so I think we'll get that done. In fact, I'm going to put some super glue in there as well. In fact, what I will do is clamp this in. Like 
like so, just to hold it in place. And then I'll put some glue in to act as an adhesive and a filler. And yeah, you know, we may not be able to see it, but it's good practice, isn't it? It's good fun. It's good to to do it properly. There we go. So that can sit and dry now. Um, got the shopping done. We've got to take Jess out. So I might wait for that to dry before we... Although I might just get a clear coat down. I've also glued these in. Um, basically just clamp them in with pegs and then put the glue in uh, just to hold them in place. This sort of, Everything holds itself together on this model because you've got those brackets there holding that down. You'll have the floor piece I've just shown you holding it that way. You've got the actual bomb bay itself holding it that way. And you've got that brace there holding it that way. So it really can go anywhere even if you don't glue it in. And I mean this whole this whole model can just be snapped together I'm sure of it. I, I mean the glue, the bomb bay doesn't need to be glued together. That's for sure. Um, so yeah I guess now what I need to do is grab a toothpick wherever one may be. There's one over here. And... We will pick away our VMS liquid mask. Let's see how that looks. And if we get a nice gloss coat on there, when we do the washes, it won't it won't sort of want to blend everything in. There we go, you can see now that we've got the, the pre-coloured photo etch. Now we have the green paint matching our green cockpit, not not the um not the Edward, which as I say quite often doesn't match. So over here we've got this gauge at the bottom. And then there's this one here. As, as I said earlier, I haven't been too precise with any of this because over the top here we've got the main throttles so you're not I don't think you're even going to be able to see this unless you really try and see it try and look for it so there we go and then there's a black hard there look so you can see now we've got that it's all blended in. There's no seam lines around the outside. It looks like it's all part of it. So that's how I go about getting my pre-coloured photo etched to sort of blend in with the rest of the cockpit. So what I'm going to... Oh, there's another piece here. There. There's some more on here. So there's some on there. That can come away. Like so. And then we've got some on here as well. So that can come away and again we have our our pre-coloured green parts are now the right colour and they've still got all the detail on there from the pre-coloured photo etch so there you go just to show you how it's going to look I have my cockpit and undercarriage here you can slide that into those holes I mean, this is what I mean about this kit, it's just so nice. Look at the positive fit of that. Shake it about, it doesn't fall out. You can see once we put the throttle quadrant in on top of there, you're not really going to be able to see any of those dials down there. You may see some of the levers, I suppose, sticking out. But it's a very nice looking, um, it's a very nice looking little cockpit, I must be honest. It's very, very busy. What's going on? As you can see, when you look down in there, there's lots to see in there. So well worth having the canopy open. Right. So I'm going to get a gloss coat on this now. There's our undercarriage on the folding away. I'm going to get a gloss coat on this now and then uh, I will see you back after I've done that. So I'll note guys going forward, the this um, hole there doesn't need to be filled because the loudspeaker there hides it. Um, this one needs to be filled because you can see it. 
there's a square hole there. Uh, you can see I've put a piece of plastic card in the top and just super glued it in and then sanded it down. And the reason being is when this goes in like so, when it's in the fuselage, you can see the top of that area there. And I'm not sure if you can see it, but just if you look where that plastic card is now, when I close it up, you can see that so a piece of plastic card that's at the top of the hole is visible so you know if you're fussy like me just just fill it in before you do anything all these holes that one needs to be filled they're hidden by the walls of the undercarriage bay it's very cleverly designed um those two are hidden by these bits here uh those two are hidden by these bits here that go up into there like that so when the bomb bay goes in, as you will see, it's all hidden. So that one's hidden behind there, and that one's hidden behind there. So it's very cleverly designed. What we do have on here, which I'm not going to worry about because I'm, I'm assuming they're supposed to be there. We've got a square cut out there and square cut outs there. Now either they're for something else for another kit. Um, or they are actually square holes that are supposed to be there. But I, I don't know. Um, I'm going to leave them and then put some wash in them because you're only ever going to see them if you take the turret out anyway. But uh, we want it all to look nice, don't we? Even if we are you know, closing that with the turret. So there we go. Um, so now what I need to do, I keep this one step forward, ten steps back here. I have to mask off that hole. Paint this black, paint this black, then paint it green, and then give it a gloss coat. So I'll see you next Thursday week. Yeah, you guessed it, I still haven't put a clear coat on. A um, bit of advice for those building this kit. I've got all this painted and everything. Um, so that's all done. When you come to here, you do all this work here, you get everything painted, and everything's all good to go. And then when you turn the page, You've got to fit the machine gun. So if you've got all this painted and weathered and all lovely and everything, you've got these plastic parts to deal with. Now, the way this works, this is a, you can see this is a bracket. This is a bracket here that goes into that hole there. And that bracket has a pivot. So this shaft can pivot out, okay, 90 degrees. And then up on the top, there's a pivot where the gun sits and the gun can also pivot. Now I wanted to use the gas patch guns that they gave me, kindly gave me for this, um, but unfortunately we've got a shelf down here and that looks pretty accurate for, to the to the kit from what I can see. Uh, there's all sorts of different images in that book. It's got a picture from the outside and then a picture from the inside and it's, it's two completely different guns. So I don't know what's going on there, but they're both sort of sat on a shelf. Now I did consider cutting off the gun and putting it onto this shelf using the gas patch gun but then I thought well I've got that 30 second scale Catalina I would much rather use the flexible handhelds in that you know behind those great big teardrops I think they would look they'd be much better used in there the only time you're going to see them in here is if you look up through that hole in the fuselage which you're not really going to see the gun at all or if you look down through there which you're not really going to see much of the gun at all so I've used the gas patch barrel because obviously the barrel is is gorgeous as you can see um, but I don't really I, I think it, I see it as a bit of a waste to go to using the gas patch gun in that position unless I was going to you know swivel it all around and have it mounted out hanging at the bottom like this which I thought about but then I thought it was going to be very easily breakable so I'll just put it in its stowed position so the aircraft's parked up and it's pushed over to the side so that they can get in and out so Obviously, now this has got to be painted and primed. So this would all be green, and this will be like the the, the gunmetal colour. Um, so it all needs to be primed and black. <laughs> so yeah, quite annoying. Um, so if if I were you, if you're building one of these, I would get this bit fitted onto there. Another word of note: there is a a lug on the back of here. You can see this this lug. As standard, this lug reaches all the way up to the top here. OK, so when you fit the gun, when you fit it, you know, as high as it will go into that slot, what happens is, I'll just put it in the slot. 
what happens is it's kind of it's kind of there okay and then when you come to put this floor in the floor doesn't want to go in it's in the way so what I've done is cut some of that peg away you can see there so that the the top of the peg is below the top surface of the actual bracket so now I can put it in and pull it up and look when it's horizontal then this floor will easily slide in okay so it's almost like it's resting on it so there we are um, I also cut a little bit off it to allow it to go you know a, few, a half a millimeter forward because it was it was catching on there so that's the first uh, there was a couple of bits in the turret wasn't there but that's the first part in the fuselage that I found is uh, is not a great fit everything else just bangs together beautifully so I don't know whether to glue this on here now I think I will and then um, and then we'll have to brush paint again oh, I don't know maybe I won't do that now um, maybe I should pin it so that I can just put it in afterwards but this needs to be painted green here. The other, the, anyway, the whole thing needs to be prime black first. Um, and then it needs to be painted, fitted in place, and then it needs to be painted interior green. Oh, how many times have I cleaned the airbrush today of interior green? So I'll get all this done, and then I'll come back. And uh, hopefully this time when I come back, I really will have it clear coat. So finally, we've got the clear coat down, and I've also fitted this throttle quadrant thingamajig there in the side of the cockpit. As you can see, the gloss really makes that um, pre-shading really stand out. And it also makes the green pop a lot brighter. You can see how much brighter it looks there than it is there. So, you know, I don't understand where all this bloody fluff is coming from. Everything I do lately, I'm getting absolutely covered in these tiny little bits of dust. It's really fine, tiny little bits of fluff. It's really strange. It's, it may be Jess bolting or something. I don't know. It's weird. But, um, they're... they're absolutely tiny really really fine little hairs but, uh, I did the rivet video the other day it was awful so I, I, it may be this stuff this let me know in the comments is it this blitz stuff that does it I really don't know um so anyway we've got the roof back on the bomb base we can see the lovely lovely little bomb here with all that Edvard goodness in there so um it all sort of goes together really nicely and really really happy with it um, I'm still convinced this is Hong Kong models best it really is just absolutely packed with detail I mean you know from from nose to tail you've got interior detail that really is you know a full interior it's beautiful so um yeah very nice indeed the uh, if you are doing this and you've done this conversion where you've moved the instrument panel back you're going to need to remove some material from the back of this throttle part here. Okay, I, I talked about that before. When you fit it, put it on with a tiny little drop of extra thin and then quickly put your cockpit assembly in. Don't fit it until you've got the cockpit assembly done. And then you can nudge it up against the bulkhead so you get a nice tight fit there against that firewall next to the seat. That's what you're looking for. But uh, you can see already, you know, with that in there, how really busy this is starting to look. It really is something, uh, it really is something else. It's, it's bloody awesome. Of course, we've got all those in these buttons and everything in there. It's, um, I'm really happy. I think it's my best cockpit ever. So saying that, my Hong Kong models 132nd scale Lancaster cockpit with the um, air scale cockpit set that I actually in the end sold. That was, that was lovely. It's, uh, never mind. Um, so I've got another one now. So basically, um, yeah, all clear coated. I've painted the, the ammo box silver. We'll get some oils and washes and get that looking dirty. The floor has now got a clear coat, so we'll let that dry thoroughly. And then we'll get some oils on there and get the wood effects done. And then, you know, just paint or paint the gun. With some metallic black paint or whatever, I'll just do that by brush, and uh, and then give it an oil wash, maybe a rough with a bit of graphite, rough a rub with a bit of graphite, and make it all just pop. Um, these bits here, I, I could have glued them all in uh, before I did any washes or anything, but I thought I'll do it all separate, and then the side to make sure the sides look the same. Otherwise, what you get is a build up in this side where the 
bulkheads meet the sides, but you won't get on that side. So I'd rather do it and then just put them in after. Um, front and the back of the bottom bay has also had a gloss coat, as you can see there, and as you can see there. Okay, there are some marks here where I've done that super glue and the sanding and stuff. I'm not worried about that. You can't really see it. Um, and as I say, it's behind the turret anyway, and it's right up against that wall. And you're going to be looking in, it's, you know, you're not really going to see it down in there. So, uh, and this lot back here, you know, if you look down through there, when the fuselage is together, you're going to see, you know, you're going to see some of this here at the front, but you're not going to see this at the back. So I'll just probably paint all those black and then put a dry brush of silver over them or something, or maybe make the back ones highlight so they, it looks like there's some good detail down there. But there's no real point of having that there really, but it's nice that HK have put it in there. Um, so there we go. Uh, I need to do my little thing with the making the round knobs. You've got these tiny little canopy release levers here in photo etch. I need to do them. And I've also got to build up this little, there's, there's four levers that go in there. I've got to build that up and get that in. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to call it a day for this video now. And I'm going to go and do all my little bits and pieces. And then I'll come back and make another video. I can't even remember what part this is. Is this part 12? I can't remember, but the next part, <laughs> the next number after this one, um, I'll, I'll have all this weathering and washing and all that done. You've seen me do it a million times, you know, the detail painting and all that. I, I don't need to just keep covering over the same thing or it's going to get quite, you know, repetitive because modelling can be quite repetitive. If you always build 30 second scale World War II American bombers, then it's going to be quite re repetitive. But I know you guys enjoy it, but um, I, it's, it's also fun for me sometimes to do work and have some music on or have some news on or whatever a film on in the background which I obviously can't do when I'm doing the, making the videos so um that's what I'm going to do I'm going to get this all done I won't do any assembly um other than putting a few bits of photo etch on and uh, but you've seen me do all that you know how to do that and I've shown you you know how to do this and, and mask it and paint it and make it all look like it's one rather than these funny green color bits glued on um I've showed you how to do the, the filling and the blending to make that look like it's a, a, a box rather than a piece of photo etch stuck to a piece of plastic. Showed you how to mask it, um, you know, and, and that's that really. Oh, again, this part here, this is number seven in the kit, the photo etch set. Again, that doesn't have a fold line, so you've got to fold it yourself. Just guess where it's folded. And, you know, when, when you look down in the cockpit, you're not going to even see it. So don't worry about it too much. What I intend to do with these levers is there's like a, a curved part that goes over there and the levers go in. What I intend to do, where is the photo etch set? What I intend to do is, come here, there it is, uh, there, number 11. You can see there, number 11. What I intend to do is just roll it, get it to the right shape, and then stick it to a little tiny piece of plastic card, and then I'll put the levers in it. And then I'll paint it all black around the base and then put it in there and glue it on there as an assembly rather than try and fit it onto there and then fit the levers in. Um, I think that'd be a lot better. I've also got a makeup. There's all these switches here, the big sort of knockover switches that are going in these bits here. Uh, there's also some switches going in there. There's the big plastic switch going on there. There's a box to go in there. We've got to get all that painted. There's lots and lots of work to do, which I'm not going to bore you with. So um, I'll see you when all that's done. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, and if you've liked the video, please give us a thumbs up. If you haven't, give us a thumbs down. It all counts the same. Um, and if you have any questions or comments, please put them down below. If you really want to see any particular part of this, get a comment in quickly. You might catch me before I do it. But uh, other than that, I very much doubt it. You can see in here, it's all looking a bit rough now where I've scraped the uh, ejector pins out and everything. I haven't made too much fuss about it because you're only going to see up through there. It's not like in the cockpit. Um, and obviously I haven't removed those three because they go in behind that panel that's going to go in there like that. So, um, sorry, like that. So uh, there we go. I will see you all soon. Thank you for watching and uh, stay tuned. Oh, one other thing. Note when you put masks, these masks are on the inside, leave them on there until the very end 
okay because once we've done the oils and stuff we may decide to give it a flat varnish or a semi-gloss varnish or whatever we want the clear parts to remain shiny inside and out throughout the build so there we go so i hope you've learned something from this one um hope you've enjoyed it as i say any questions or comments stick them down below I'll see you all soon oh don't forget if you are building one of these guys get that machine gun mount in um you know before you start doing painting and everything because i've just had to go back over this again and again and again right i'll see you all soon bye for now